This ministry was born out of divine inspiration, and it was born out of the culture of America in the 1930s. And in that culture, there was a prevalence of Christianity. And in some ways, many ways, this program that we're a part of was born out of that Christian culture. And yet from the very beginning, what was offered transcended the culture that it was born out of. With great love and appreciation and honor, not only for the culture, but for the truth that the culture pointed to. And still, we have from the very beginning welcomed people from all faiths, all lands, all races. What we have to offer here is not unique to Christianity. It's not unique to America. It's universal. It's global. Last week, we spoke some about the Divine Mother, Mother God. The cultures of the world have their way of representing that uniquely, whether it's Mother Mary, Sophia, Quan Ying, there's an acknowledgement of the Divine Mother. I grew up in a Unitarian household. We read the Thornton Burgess nature books. Anybody? Read those books growing up. Really charming books if you want to read a, a, a book to a child. And one of the characters in the story was Mother Nature. That was the author's way of speaking of the Divine Mother. And Mother Nature was always there for all the animals of the forest. It's so sweet. And I suppose in, in its own way, gave my own child consciousness a way to think about the universal mother, the mother that pervades all things and is everywhere. In some traditions, at least in this country, but not only in this country, there's a looking to Mother God, perhaps named as Mother Earth, the Earth Mother, in an awareness of this reality. I sometimes think, don't you get it? That's us. That's us. In the world for which we're responsible, if the mother is not present through us as human beings, if we're not an expression of love and compassion and protection, if we're not there to foster the growth of people, to enfold them in our love and care? Who will? You could say, well, Mother God loves them. That's nice and good, and, and, and it's true. But is it really enough? Is that what we really say to a, a, a young child? Well, Mother God loves you. <laughs> no, I, I'm here to offer that kind of surround, whether I'm a man or a woman. I'm here to offer that. For my world, I am Mother God. I am that. In a similar way, people look to Father God by whatever name. In Christian circles, maybe they look to Jesus, God Almighty, Allah. And there is a reality of the Father that's bigger than any of us, in some way represented by the Son, perhaps. But there's a divine Father as well. Thinking of one of the names for, for the Father, and it's the Creator. The Creator. 
There is the, the creator of all. There is that creative power that's within all things. It's within the atom. And then with all live, within all living form, it's not actually different from you to me. The creative power in you, the creative spirit in you, what's driving your atoms is the same as what's driving my atoms. It's one reality of creatorship that's bigger than us all. The creator. And yet, we perhaps awaken that in terms of our own world of responsibility, our own sphere of life, we're not only going to rely on the big God up there someplace, but we're there to be the creator in that world. And we're there to take responsibility as a creator for our creation. It's easy to look at what's in our life and think, how did that get there? Or how did this person get there? It usually comes down to that. <clears throat> how did this circumstance get here? Our life changes. When we take the attitude, I created it. I don't know how but I'm the creator and something I, I did or some way of being that I had, whatever it was, I drew this to me and I did for a reason. And I may not know what that reason is. I may feel like protesting it. No, not this, but it's my creation. I have responsibility for my creation, and I also have authority. And that's the trick of it. The more you assume responsibility for your creatorship and for having created your world, the more you have authority over that world. Not the kind of authority that bosses people around. That's not what I'm talking about. But you're very spirit of creatorship, your very attitude, what then emanates from you as a creator, as a way of influencing and creating something wonderful out of whatever it is, no matter how awful it looks. I am Yes, a creator, but actually for my world, I am the creator. I am the creator. I bring the seeds of creation. I bring the power of creation. And I bring that spirit of intention that is the spirit of intention for all things and within all people. Now, that intention in the world in which we live doesn't always come out as a clear expression of what it is. It's because, let's face it, what comes out of people very often is, why is this happening to me? And that comes along with all kinds of aggravated feelings, fear-based emotions, But the intention of the creator is love. 